trying to find best builds for Baldur's Gate 3, I already made over 100 builds on my channel. And in today's video I will show you 4 godly builds that I think most fun and enjoyable to play. And some of them really OP. It's me, the Spot King. Let's go. And let's instantly start with most broken powerful OP build. This will be super optimized monk build and it's really incredible. But there's little trick to make this build useful throughout the game. So first of all you need to keep in mind this will be monk and rogue subclass build. And you can play it two ways from the start of the game. You can start as rogue and play as rogue up to level 8 for example, uses like daggers, short swords, use bows, wherever. Or if you want to start as monk from the start of the game, you need to do it like that. So we start as monk and as monk you got this unarmored defense that will give you more armor class depending on your wisdom. So main abilities for monk will be wisdom and dexterity. Dexterity will give you more chances to hit your enemies with your weapons, with your fists and wisdom will increase your armor class. Third main ability is constitution to have more health points and then you got uh, some more points you can go with uh, strength and charisma just to be able to jump a little bit longer and maybe not fail charisma checks or just go with 12 into strength. But there is a catch. This build will be around one awesome feat. So while this is like starting ability distribution, you want to change it when you level up and change your gear. And you will do it many times throughout the game. So let me explain. At around level 4 you want to change your abilities and instead of having high dexterity, you want to have high strength. And that's for a reason. Because at level 4 you want to scroll down in feat selection and get Tavern Brawler feat. And yeah, you can even start with 17 into strength with this build, so you will get 18 strength at this point of the game. And at level 5 as monk you will get extra attack, so you will get 2 attacks in one turn. And what's this Tavern Brawler feat doing? Basically it's adding your strength modifier to your attacks. And it's adding to attack roll and damage roll. So you will add at level 5 4 to your damage rolls and 4 to your attack rolls. It's uh, like almost 100% hit chance at these levels and that's incredibly good. But when you finish in the game around level 12, when you get to these awesome items that I will show you just in a second, like Amulet of Greater Health and Gauntlets of Heal Giant Strength, that's the point in the game when you go and respect one more time. So final character creation will look like that. With these late game items you don't need constitution, you don't need strength. And you can go with wisdom and dexterity. So just go and add a lot to them. So your starting level 1 distribution will be like this. 16 into dexterity, intelligence 12, charisma 13, wisdom 17. Bonuses to dex and whiz. Then you're leveling up your monk. Second level will give you monk actions. Very cool, interesting, but we don't... I am reminding you, you're level 12 right now. Our subclass of choice will be way of the open hand monk. So feat of choice number one will be Tavern Brawler. And we don't care where we distribute these points. So level 5 monk gives extra attack. Very nice level. And when you're... And if you started as a rogue, you want to respect into monk at around level 6, level 7 maybe. Because level 6 will give you key empowered strikes. So now your fists become a little weapon and they ignore enemy resistances. That's just incredible stuff. So level 7 monk. Level 8 Monk. And level 8 will give us additional feats. We go into ability improvement and just add into our wisdom and charisma, just like that. So level 9, we don't need any monk levels right now, and we switch into rogue, of course. Coolest part over here, we're getting this rogue action, so we can use bonus action without using our key points to dash, to hide, to disengage. Very cool stuff, but we won't disengage as this type of monk, because this monk is definitely broken one. So third level we're picking our subclass from our rogue and we can go with Sith rogue to get additional bonus action. Insane stuff. And now like tricky and cool part. So you can finish with just level 4 rogue, uh, get ability improvement, get wisdom up to 20 and get some nice damage buff actually from this because you add in wisdom modifier to every attack and to your passive abilities I will show you in a second but there's one cool trick right now. So if you don't need this feat, actually you're not getting anything from Rogue 
level 4 rogue only for feet. You can go into level 9 monk, for example, for key resonation punch. But for this build, we don't need these key resonation punches uh, too much. We <laughs> do an insane amount of damage without them. So, just to improve our damage, at first I thought like uh, it's nice idea to get ranger to use hunter mark on our enemies and inflict additional damage but the a catch uh, ranger don't have spell casting from level one and that's when i decided to go with warlock actually so as warlock you get in some cantrips you don't have high spell casting charisma so we don't care about any of the spells actually we won't use these cantrips anyway we don't want to use our actions for them for subclass, I would go with the uh, Great Old One, just in case you critical hit, enemies can be frightened, and that's like cool part. Or you can go with Fiend to get temporary hit points, but I would stick with the Great Old One. So most important stuff that we need from our Warlock is actually Hex Spell. So Hex Spell is just insane, because when we're making attacks and dealing damage, we will deal additional damage and that's crazy! So, if you're playing this build like me as a Asterion, I recommend to use Vampire Bite, for example, on Vola in the camp. And this will make you happy and add to your attack rolls. Most importantly, when you're playing this type of monk, you want to go into this monk tab in your spellcasting and use these passives over here. So, these passives will add damage to your punches, but you need to turn them on. So, skills, actions is really straightforward, self-explanatory and fun, easy to play. So, unarmed strike, basic attack, doing 23 to 34 damage. And if you think that's not insane, guys, that's just incredible. My paladin with best weapon in the game, doing 27 to 37 damage with one attack. Best weapon in the game. Legendary weapons that doing double damage from our strength modifier that's insane and this dude without weapons doing 23 to 34 damage and additionally he will do even more just in a second so then we got our flurry blows that will do 46 to 68 damage look at damage chart insane this will use your key points and bonus action so you can do two unarmed strikes in one turn and two flurry of blows in one turn and that's without any potions and other stuff so then we got uh, this row with rogue actions so you can use bonus action to dash just in case you need to trail to your targets and of course our hex from warlock we got only one level spell slot from warlock but that's totally okay because you can use it if you keep your concentration you can recast it every time every battle or just to restore this uh, slot with short rest after the battle so that's basically all you need most important stuff for this like type of build what is important items so that's like super optimized very cool item build and you need this amount of greater health and you can find it in house of hope in act 3 and basically, if you don't know where to get these items, just look in the Google, guys. It's really easy. There's just a lot of guides where you can exactly and how you exactly can get these items. If you need guides for this. Or just to explore, try to find these items by yourself and make this build. So next important stuff is Boots of Unhibited Kushiga. This will add Wisdom Modifier to Unarmed Strikes. And this wisdom modifier is not even over here, so we don't see this in damage. And our wisdom modifier is plus 4, so it's 27 to 38 actually. And that's a lot more. Then gauntlets of heal giant strength. That's why we dumped strength, because as you can see right now we got 9 strength, but this will make our strength to flat 23. Just like that we got 23 strength, so... With Tavern Brawler, we add in plus 6 to our attack rolls, damage rolls, insane stuff. So next to armor, you can find it in Act 2, just buy it. Or even in Act 1.5, on the road, on the high road, not in the Underdark pack, but on the road hills, roadside hills, I guess. Uh, so this will add plus 2 to your decks and will give you Cat Grace, that will give you advantage on... Ability checks with dexterity helps to lock pick, disable traps, other stuff, and increasing jump distance by 1.5 meter. It's really useful in large areas when you fight in large areas. Very nice stuff. Cloak of Displacement uh, will give enemies disadvantage on first attack rolls 
on us and that's nice uh, cloak i like it because it will help us keep concentration so enemies will miss us because our armor class is not too high it's 19 reasonable but not too high and horns of the berserker very nice item i actually forgot where i got this i get first i Yes, it's from Trader. So we get in plus two bonus to attack rolls when attacking creatures that have already taken damage. And as you can guess, when we use our unarmed strike, we're doing some damage. And then every time we're attacking this dude, it's a lot more high chance to hit him. It's just incredible stuff. So that's like most important items for this build. But also I like to use Elixir of Bloodlust. When we kill a foe, we gain temporary hit points and additional actions this turn. So that's really cool Elixir. And it will last until long rest. That's just incredible part. So it will last you for whole day. So let's host on ourselves and just look at this Asterion. We're basically starting with Hex on our target. It doesn't matter too much what hex you use, but uh, constitution, strength, dexterity is like best hexes. And just look at that. Normal attack hit. So what we're doing here? It's late game enemy. He got 18 armor class, but to hit him is really easy because we're rolling 1d20 plus 4 from our proficiency plus 6 from Tavern Brawler, plus 4 from Favorable Beginnings if you're using Tadpoles, plus 1 from Happy if you're playing Asterion, and plus 6 from Strength Modifier. So for a total of 41. I mean, if, even if we roll to like 2, we will hit this dude, and that's crazy. And that's just normal unarmed strike, I remind, reminding you. So we're drawing 2d6 blood joining, plus 6 from our strength, plus 4 from our wisdom, because we got these boots of unhibited Kushiga, and plus 6 from strength modifier from Tavern Brawler. That's insane, in my opinion at least. So we're rolling a lot of dice, but additionally we're rolling 2d4 from blood thirst, and that's coming from our horns of berserker, and 2d6 from hex. 2d6 from hex. And additionally, we're rolling 2d4 plus 4 from our passive of choice. So you can examine your enemy, check if he got resistance, for example, to like psychic damage, and then switch your passive to radiant damage. You can go and do it on the fly. And again, it was just one attack. What we can do, actually, we can do two attacks with one action. So we're making another attack. Doing again insane amount of damage and yeah we can do one more attack of course because we got second action from haste so he will be dead right now no he's right with three hit points so let's make one more attack and we get one more action from our elixir of bloodlust and depending on what we want to do we can recast hex if a target got Loads of hit points, for example, this dude got 132 hit points, that's pretty large number. Or we can just use Flurry Blows Topple. So it depends, uh, will your allies help or not, you can decide and reapply Hex. But uh, actually I like to apply Hex on my first target, to start uh, my fight, for example, with this, and then just use two Flurry of Blows Topple. But again, oh my god, it's just how many numbers? So what we're doing, we're doing basically two unarmed attacks, and again, we're rolling just uh, crazy amounts of damage. Yeah, it's uh, 1d6 or when we're doing this flurry of blows, normal attack, and basically we're finishing this friend with two attacks again. And I don't know, if you don't think it's crazy, I think it's crazy. We just killed two persons, or almost killed, that got uh, around 250 health points in total. And of course, coolest part, when our allies making successful whole persons, we can do this with critical strikes with 100% chance and just destroy them with like one punch, two punches. Crazy, crazy. Use bonus action as rogue. So we can travel large distances. I mean, distance is just insane. Look, we can travel for like 35 meters. And just run towards our targets and destroy them. With just a few punches. That's insane. 
insanely broken. And if you liked this build, you will enjoy next one too. So next up, Paladin. Paladin was my main, and I guess it's really fun to play, especially as your first playthrough, because Paladins got nice charisma, so you will be getting more positive outcomes in dialogues. And this build will fix all problems Paladin have and make him insanely broken. So let's build. If you'll play this build as your main character, I would play with ability points like that. So we're starting with Paladin, we're getting Oaths of Vengeance, I like this Oath, and our abilities will be Strength 17, Constitution 14, we dump Dex, dump Intelligence, and getting high charisma with 16 and 10 into wisdom. So why are we starting with 17? Because as main character you can get plus 1 to strength and then plus 2 to strength without using any feats or other stuff. If you don't know how to do it, and I guess many players already know how to do it, but if you don't know, I will give you slight tips on how you can get this plus 1 and plus 2 bonuses. So plus 1 will be offered if you're not killing Hack in the first act. So when you will face Hack, don't kill her entirely, try to knock her out or just reduce up to like 10-20 hit points and then let her live, skip turns, she will offer you this plus one bonus. And plus two you will get in act two in Moonrise Towers from the Trader of Elixirs if you got Asterion in your party. So that's my tips, you will find out yourself how to get it. As Paladin you get uh, proficiency in every armor type, in every weapon type, so that's like a great part. On second level you can pick your fighting style and you want to get great weapon fighting for this build. This build will be focused on two-handed weapon, not this loot or whatever on this big sword that's under loot of course. So we will be focusing on great two-handed weapon fighting. For our prepared spells it doesn't matter too much, we don't care about spells actually. Only thing we want from Paladin is our smites of course. So Divine Smite is our bread and buzzer, for this build we will do insane amount of damage with this. So we just level up as Paladin up to level 5. On level 3 you will get this uh, futures from Oaths of Vengeance if you choose Wu Enmity to gain advantage on attack rolls against enemy and Hunter's Mark to inflict even more damage to enemies. These two actions use as uh, only bonus action, so this will take care of your bonus actions in early game. You basically start fight, for example, with gaining advantage against enemy and next turn you cast in Hunter's Mark because uh, Wu of Enmity doesn't use any concentration. This like cool part over here. We go into level 4 of course, that's when we're picking our feet and our feet of choice for this build because we got 20 strength without any feats, we can focus on sentinel. At this part of the game I mostly using spears and other stuff, so I got more reach, more range with my weapon, but it doesn't matter too much. All we want to do, uh, we want to have this sentinel feat just to have advantage on opportunity attacks, so when, we, when enemies try to run away from us we get advantage. And most importantly, when enemy attacks a lie that is nearby, we can use reaction to make weapon attack against that enemy. And that's broken, you will see just in a second. So as Paladin, we want to get to level 5, and again as also Vengeance, we get this hold person spell, so we can hold our enemies and then just critical strike them. Of course, uh, this can be used as your mages, I mean your mages can have this spell, but it's always nice to have... Uh, at least chance to cast this spell with our party members to inflict a lot of critical strike damage and most importantly Misty Step. So Misty Step from Oath of Vengeance will give you ability as with bonus action to teleport to any place on battlefield. And because we got low dexterity, we acting kinda last in a turn, we can determine best place in the battlefield where we want to teleport and use all our power. Next up, if you just uh, playing, I recommend uh, even to stick with Paladin up to level 8 and then respect into this build. So Paladin level 6, gaining this aura of protection that's really great and powerful stuff that will give bonus to saving throws to your allies and most of the time your ally will be cleric that's standing nearby of you, 
and he will have nice time to keep in concentration on his spells. And I will show you cleric build in the end of this video, by the way. Very broken cleric build. But right now we are very powerful, we can do two attacks in one turn with our action and our bonus action only adding 1d6 uh, of damage from Hunter's Mark for example. So it's nice idea instead of going to level 6 uh, of Paladin, just go and pick our subclass. So we're multiclassing into Cleric and especially into War Domain Cleric. So we don't care about spells at all, we don't use in spells as this type of paladin, we are war machine, we destroying everyone, that's why just pick whatever you like, but from war to main cleric you will get this class feature that will give you ability to use your bonus section for attack. And you can do it 3 times per long crest and that's enough for this build, you will do just insane amounts of damage, so you don't care actually too much about this stuff. 3 attacks is enough. So with this build from level 6 you already can do 3 attacks in one turn and all of these attacks will be divine smites that will do insane amount of damage. So it's time to finish our build and we're finishing our build with sorcerer. So when we switch into sorcerer all we need from sorcerer not his spells, not his cantrips. That's why we can use uh, like uh, ritual spells so uh, like enhance sleep of other fall just for exploration. This won't use spell slots if used outside of combat, so you can cast it and jump wherever you like, something like that. For sorcerer subclass it doesn't matter too much, again you can use whatever you like. You can use wild magic for fun, sometimes it will proc from your spells and you will have wild effects. So sometimes they awful for you, sometimes they insane for you, sometimes they just mech, so wherever. Or you can use storm sorcery, so if you use spells, you can use fly as bonus action <laughs> and travel on the battlefield with tempest tools magic, that's insane stuff. And basically we're finishing our build with sorcerer. For meta magic we want to get twin spell and maybe distance spell, we don't get too much, most importantly we want our meta magic we can spell, sometimes it's nice to use it, but again we don't care too much. So most important part from sorcerer that we get is sorcerer spell slots of course. And this fly action of course is nice too. So uh, when we get in feet we can get it on level 10 as sorcerer level 4. We want to scroll down and get this savage attacker feet. So what is feet doing? Whenever we rolling damage numbers we are rolling them twice and using highest result always. And we will roll a lot of damage numbers, a lot of damage numbers. And with this build actually we can pick haste as our spell and cast it on ourselves. So you're not using other characters uh, to keep the concentration on yourself, you don't need this concentration anyway. And basically finish this build with sorcerer. So to play this build you don't need all this stuff, you can just totally forget this. All we actually need is just uh, your normal attacks, uh, maybe your weapon attacks. Uh, like cliff and other stuff, maybe haste if you casting it on yourself of course. From cleric you don't need anything and from paladin. From paladin all we need is our misty step in the late game and wall of enmity just in case we need this advantage against the high armor enemy. And that's basically it, that's it, that's everything you need. But most importantly you need to go to your reactions and make sure you got all divine smites checked so you can have these divine smites when you're just attacking. So when you attack enemies you will be prompted with question do you want to use divine smite. So from sorcerer you will get this sync sorcery points, you can use it uh, to cast for example haste in the fight as bonus action instead of action, that can be used sometime, but most of the time you will just use this uh, create spell slot spell and you can create level 4 spell slot from 6 sorcery points and now you will get 4 spell slots of level 4 and all of them will be used for your smites. So let me show you. This is late game enemy with pretty high AC and nice health pool, 132 health. And we will destroy her with just few attacks. How we can do it? Take a look at our items. So we can use any great two-handed weapon you like. So in act 1 I used a spear from the tomb, in act 2 I got spear from the another tomb. In Act 3, from the start of the Act 3, I got this Nerilna legendary item, very cool spear. And when I found this stuff, I used this, so it's Baldron's Giant Slayer. 
it's uh, doubling damage from our strength modifier, got nice enchantment, so it's just very high damage item. Additionally, we're rolling uh, 2d6s when we're rolling damage, and with savage attackers we're rolling two times and picking highest numbers, that's insane stuff. So for our bow of choice, we're not using this bow to attack, we just having it in our inventory, because number we need to roll for critical hit while attacking is reduced by one, and this effect can stack with our Cerevox horned helmet, you can get it from Cerevox, when you find him, you just destroy him and you will get this number reduced one more time, so now we need only like around 18 to roll for critical hit. I use just basic cloak of protection and evasive shoes to increase our armor class by 2, so it's plus 1 plus 1. Legacy of the Master Glows, you can buy it from Trader, you gain plus 2 bonus to attack rolls and damage rolls with weapons, so again it's uh, more damage when we damaging someone. Any good heavy armor, any good heavy armor will work. And I like these combinations of rings and amulets on this class, so Surgeon Amulet. You can get it from Surgeon, of course, and when we're scoring a critical hit on Humanoid, we paralyze him for two turns, and this means every other attack will make critical hit again. When we kill a creature, we can use this ring to make next attack critical hit, so we can have around like 100% critical hit on Humanoids. And Crusher Ring, you can get it from Crusher from Act 1. He is in Goblin Camp, it will give you additional movement speed, very cool stuff. So that's like full build. And just look at this build in action. So we cast haste on ourselves. Now we're concentrating, we can use this giant form. And we are becoming a very big person, very big person. And of course my favorite, Elixir of Bloodlust. When we kill someone we will get additional action. So, attack number one. Enjoy guys, rounds to make critical hit and just with one attack With savage attackers we're rerolling re every damage as you can see there's just lots of rerolls and every reroll re rerolling like 1 million of damage and we using highest damage possible So from 4d6s from critical hit we rolled 21 damage from this weapon We add in plus 3 from weapon plus 5 from strength plus 5 from strength from giant slayer 2 times because we got this weapon, plus 2 from our gloves, plus 8 from 2d6s from giant form, from this weapon, plus 3 from savage attacks, because we are orc. So if you pick an orc, half orc, you're getting this. And just for demonstration, I will cast Divine Smite on critical hit, level 5 Divine Smite, and it will do from 5 to 40 radiant damage, and most of the time it will do something close to 40, because we got the Savage Attacker, and it's also rerolling damage on our Divine Smite. So look at this, we just rolled 57, because we rolled 55 from our Smite, and of course we rolled additional 1d8, because we are half orc. But here's the reason why we picked Sentinel. So, in the combat, we can use our action to make two attacks, then we can use our bonus action to make one more attack from our War Cleric proficiency. And then we got this Sentinel feat, so when it's time for our friend from our light turns, they, will, uh, they can just come close to our enemies and just run away. So when they run in away, enemies will try to attack them, and we will be prompted with this stuff, do we want to use Sentinel as our reaction, and this adds one more attack to kinda our turn. So we're using Sentinel, and if we attack, if we hit this attack, we can use Smite again, that's crazy. And our full turn is really crazy, like that. If we got all stuff in place, if we got this Elixir of Bloodlust, if we got haste going on, so giant form, we're just using our attack, we just kill her with normal attack, so no smites, we don't need to use them. We're making another attack. So we can roll for critical hit. We can paralyze this target. So next attack will be 100% with critical hit. And we can roll for damage, insane damage actually. We can do one more attack on this dude. Again, smite, oh my god, he just destroyed, let's go destroy this bro now. And again, look, he almost destroyed, 
One more time, please. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. And one more target. Again, we got, still we got actions. Look, it's just one turn. It's just one turn. And we already just destroying everyone in this turn. And this target is not destroyed. But we got our additional attack. So, so now he is destroyed, of course. Uh, now he is destroyed. Because we are rerolling every damage we possibly could. So, that's cool, Marshall builds. But... How to build cool magic build. How to build your magic to be broken and insanely fun. Most broken spells are, and most powerful spells in this game actually concentration spells like Cloud Kill and other stuff. So you cast it and why it's broken? Because you just cast it spell from level 6 for example. Cloud Kill level 6. It will do insane amount of damage. But you just used your spell slot and now you can't cast the spell no more. But concentration spells can be recasted every turn. So just like that you can cast concentration spell many times in one turn, in next turn and do insane amount of damage to your enemies. But there's a catch. Concentration spells require you to keep concentration and keeping concentrations means you need to succeed on constitution saving throw. So you just enter zone of effect or someone attacking you. And as you can see, we just saved. And why I'm not losing concentration in this stuff? Because I got this broken build. So let me show you. There's only one thing you need to make broken concentration mage. So when you're starting as wizard, as sorcerer, no matter what you want to build for concentration mage, you will get this proficiency in kind of no armor, no shields. We got armor and shields only from human because Gale is human. So basically you will be armorless guy who need to spend points in dexterity to have at least somewhat reasonable armor class. And it's really pretty hard. Additionally, there's really a big pain point when you have in high dexterity as a concentration wizard or sorcerer, it doesn't matter too much. So our problem with high dexterity, dexterity affects initiative. This means you will attack first or among first guys who attack in a turn. And most good concentration spells is actually AOE spells, so they have area of damage. And it's better to cast them after someone taking his turns, so enemies taking turns, they gathering up in one place and then you blast them. So just like that it's the best way to use concentration spells. So that's how you build really broken concentration. We will be building sorcerer today. Concentration sorcerer, that's broken sorcerer, very enjoyable to play. We start with fighter. With fighter, yeah. So fighter will get this constitution saving throw proficiency. So you will add your proficiency bonus to constitution saving throws. It will help you keep your concentration going on. And uh, your proficiency at last levels will be 4. So you will always add 4 to your constitution saving throws. It's really easy to do. For fighting style you pick in defense, so it will furthermore increase your armor class as mage. And your starting ability distribution will look uh, something like that. You just dump your dexterity, so you will get this minus one to your initiative rolls and you will act last in a turn. So we get in constitution up to 16, it's our main attribute that we want to get. And our main attribute that we want to have is Charisma. Because we are Sorcerer, Charisma is our spellcasting modifier. You can use this build to make Wizard. Of course, it will be kind of the same build. So if you want to, to have Concentration Wizard, you can use same idea as level 1 Fighter to have this Constitution saving throw proficiency, but get more intelligence instead. For ability distribution, I like to have 10 in intelligence and 10 in strength, just for one reason, so we can uh, better resist being shoved. And then you're basically finishing your build. So instantly you're going into art class and you switch into your main casting class, it will be sorcerer. So for sorcerer starting cantrips I like to use range, cantrip, firebolt, melee damaging cantrip, shock and grasp. And some utility stuff like Minor Illusion and Bone Chill is just nice cantrip to have when you're fighting undead targets, very good. For spells of choice, you can have some disabled stuff like Sleep for early levels and Magic Missile just to do large amounts of damage. But for our subclass, 
our subclass of choice to make most broken sorcerer, that is around concentration, will be Storm Sorcery. So after we cast in any spell of level 1 or higher, we can use bonus action to fly. That's crazy. So level 2, pick whatever spells you like, uh, go with Metamagic Twin Spell and Distance Spell, so you can cast from more range, or Dual Cast, so you can cast it for two targets. And basically, every time you level up, pick every spell you like, it doesn't matter for this build. So we are finishing build with Sorcerer, but most important parts, level 4, get Quickened Spell, so you can use bonus action with Sorcerer Points to cast one more spell, sometimes you will need this. Level 4, Sorcerer, and level 5 character, we get in our feet. And for feats, everything again is really easy, straightforward, just go and all in on Charisma with ability improvement, get Charisma up to 20. Our most important level is level 7, of course, when we get in also level 6 and we get in this subclass features so when we cast in spells and doing lightning damage most important lightning damage all enemies taking lightning damage around us that's cool we are resistant to lightning damage and most importantly we get in this call lighting spell and create or destroy water spell that's basically it what we don't need anything else for our build so pick any spell you like any spell you want to use any spell you want to have fun with Get your Charisma up to 20, at level 9, at level 8 Sorcerer, and level 9 Character. Sometimes, if you need larger area of damage effect, you can get Cloud Kill at level 5. And Careful Spell, very nice meta magic. It gives you ability to cast spells when you're silenced. Sometimes it's useful, but I haven't found really too much situations when I need this in this game. And at level 6 uh, spells, you can pick Chain Lighting. We are Lighting Mage, after all. So, whatever, if you want, you can pick it, it's not require you any concentration, so why not? But we're not using the spell, actually, too much. So what gear, what armor you want for this build? Basically, it will be heavy armor, it will give you high armor class, even with dumped dexterity, very cool stuff. So our armor class is 23 right now. We got Keteric Shield, you can get it from Keteric Torn, you will get it anyway. It gives you plus one bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls. What does it mean? Basically, when enemy tries to resist your spells, they will do difficulty class checks. And you want as much difficulty spell save DC, basically, bonuses you can get. And that's basically the main idea of this build, just try and find every gear you will get with spell save DC. So, Hood of Weave plus 2 bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls. Again, it gives you higher chance to hit your fireballs. So, right now we got 60% chance to hit Lyazel, for example. But if we get rid of this helmet, we got 50% chance. So, every plus 1 gives you 5% chance to hit. That's how it works. Clock of Weave, again, plus 1 bonus to spell save DC. Helldusk Gloves, plus one bonus to spell attack rolls and spell save DC. And that's basically it. That's all you need. In the late game, you can have this marker hash cure if you will find it. It's easy to find, just Google it. And it again gives you additional bonus to spell save DC. And there's like a catch. So uh, there's like two ways you can go with this build. One way, of course, you go with uh, charisma up to 20. Second way, instead of getting your charisma up to 20, instead, instead, get elemental specialist feet. And of course, it will be element specialist lighting that will make your lighting damage attacks not resistible. So if enemy got lighting resistance, you will ignore this. That's like cool feat to have. So what we need for this build to work? We need cool lighting. And that's basically it, guys. <laughs> that's basically it. Yeah. Sometime maybe cloud kill, sometime maybe chain lighting. Most of the time, no, you don't need it. And what we are doing, basically, as a sorcerer, we start in day with, uh, for example, creating some level 5 spell slots. Most of the time, you won't actually need the spell slots anyway. And you can create sorcery points from all spell slots from level 1, level 2, level 3, so you can create more spell slots of higher levels. Most importantly, if you got this marker cash cure, you can have arcane battery, and this will give you ability to cast next spell without using spell slot. That's like cool ability to have, yeah? And how you play this <laughs> broken dude. Oh yeah, I, tot I totally forgot. Of course, from sorcerer, from our sorcerer, we want this level 1 spell, spell create or destroy water. 
so there's like cool 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 future it's nice to be hasted of course so it's very good if your ally can cast haste on you and it's also nice you already know what is nice to use elixir of bloodlust so when you kill someone you will get additional action so just like that we got two actions right now one bonus action we can use create or destroy water for example on our enemies so when enemies in this mode they will be wet and when they wet they vulnerable to lighting and cold damage what does this mean it means they taking twice as much damage from a certain damage type from lighting damage of course in our situation so now we can use bonus action to fly if we need to fly somewhere this like cool stuff because we are storm sorcery mage and now we can just use arcane battery to cast coal lighting with upcasted level 6 spell slot it will do from 6 to 60 damage 6 d10 damage it will last for 10 turns what does it mean you will you can keep concentration for 10 turns on this spell so let me just cast the spell and it will look like this it's doing already just insane amount of damage as you can see additionally on water surface it creating electrified water it will damage enemies on their turns and damage that we inflicted was 6d10 which rolled 30 total damage and it added twice because they wet right now and now as you can see we're acting last in our turn that's our like main place where we want to be we want to be last we want to enemies gather around our lights or in some spots and then we will utilize all our power and as you can see we just attacked and we succeed on two saving throws so saving throws will be if i'm not mistaken 10 or half the damage if it's higher so we got hit by 17 damage so 10 is higher than half of 17 we need to succeed on difficulty class 10 and basically we're rolling 1d20 and we got only 3 we add in plus 4 from our proficiency and plus 3 from our constitution so if we right now only sorcerer we would lost this concentration saving throw but with plus 4 from proficiency we rolled 10 exactly what we need and now we keep concentration on our spell now as you can see every enemy is gathered up in some places and we can start our dirty business so instead of casting cold lighting over here don't make this mistake you need to cast it from this part of your like action table so you need to cast it from activate call lighting it will be level zero spell slot so it's not using any spell slots because you're concentrating on the spell right now and as you can see we just upcasted it up to level six so we can do it again as level six spell slot and we even haven't used the spell slot yet so that's coolest part about this build you can just use this call lighting for example over here do damage as you can see this guy was wet and he destroyed he destroyed for just insane amount of damage 28 plus 28 plus 20 and we just casted it one time because we got this elixir of bloodlust we got additional actions so we can cast it one more time let's cast it on wet person again just like that he destroyed and everyone nearby getting damaged because we are storm sorcerer and we just cast it a uh, level six spell two times in one turn we can do it third time if we want to so we're just doing this third time and of course that's not it we can use uh, meta magic we can spell to use our sorcery points to cast it one more time and that's insane that's insane so we cast it with bonus action so every turn we're doing just insane amounts of damage with insane amounts of call lightings and we can do it for 10 turns in a row so we can have 10 turns where we're casting this stuff like three four times in one turn and only after 10 turns it will expire and then we cast call lighting again with level six spell slot again we can do it for 10 turns again but guys uh, most fights actually last for like four five six turns not more so basically you got unlimited spell slots of level 6 and can cast this insane stuff and let's not forget about cleric this build makes cleric not only heal bot but also force to be reckoned with and idea goes kind of the same as with wizard 
we want to start as fighter and then just get 11 levels in cleric. For our fighting style, we starting with defense of course to get this plus one to armor class and be more tanky and have more chance to keep our concentration going on. Main abilities for cleric will be wisdom and constitution. You want to have as much health as possible with as much wisdom as possible, because this will affect how effective you are with your spells. That's why we are assigning bonuses to these categories and making them 16-16. Then we will be using melee weapons, so to have damage and hit chance with melee weapon we want 14 into strength. And then just distribute other points, we can go with 10 into dexterity to have some nice initiative and 10 in charisma or intelligence, depending on your choice, it doesn't matter too much for the build. And then basically we're finishing our build with light domain cleric up to level 12 with 11 levels in cleric. And along the way we will get two feats, uh, these feats will be ability improvement into wisdom to increase our spell difficulty class just for that. So gear for this cleric. I like to have Devoted's Maze, that's uh, basically really good legendary item and you can get it from by just using Divine Intervention, you will get it from level 10 Cleric, just use Divine Intervention, find Intervention that will give your legendary weapon and you will get this maze. So next up we got uh, three important items. Spell Crux Amulet, you can get it from Act 2 by killing the Warden in Moonrise Towers and you will get Spell Restoration. That's just incredible ability. I will show you in a second how this looks in the fight. Reviving hands. Insane stuff. So when you heal creature, it gains effect of blade ward. And that's uh, very cool. So this creature will have resistance against bludgeoning, piercing and slashing damage. Basically against any damage that's inflicted with weapons. And just by using mass healing ward with only bonus action, you're giving it to any ally creature nearby that's crazy and when you revive creature it gains effect of dash ward so now if creature will be dead after it revived it will be back with one hit point left and that's very good because most of the time you will revive your allies in the fight and they will be dead just in one second and this will protect them from at least one attack and hell of balduron very good helmet because now you can't be critical hitted by enemy and you got stun immunity, so it's a lot harder to break concentration with stuns. So let's go and show you this bro in action. Really easy and straightforward stuff. So our spells of choice from each level, what you want to get when you're leveling up and for final build, you want to, to get basic level one spells, so guiding bolt, it's range damage spell, healing ward, bonus action healing spell, very good. Inflict Wounds, melee damaging spell with 3d10 damage, insane, insane damage actually. Bless, just in case you fight an enemy with high armor class and it's really hard to kill him or even attack him, you will cast Bless and all your party will get 1d4 to attack rolls and that's very good bonus. So from level 2 you want to get Hold Person just in case you want to disable some targets and inflict some large critical damage on them. Enhance ability, it's good for exploration when you lock picking stuff or other checks. So when you need to succeed on some checks, it will give advantage on these checks. It's just nice to have for gameplay. And then 8. 8 will give you bonus maximum hit points. And I will show you in a second how broken it is. Mass healing ward from level 3. And from level 3 we get in the 5 To revive our allies just in case. Speak with the dead. If we fail to revive them so we can speak with the dead. I'm joking of course. It's used for exploration, quests and other stuff. And speed of guardians. Our best spell. And we will use it a lot. Then we get in freedom of movement from level 4. Dash ward from level 4. And banishment. Just in case we need some more disable, protection from stun and difficult terrain, or just protection from dash to our allies. Uh, level 5, we don't need any spells from level 5, so we totally skipping them. And from level 6, we get in planner ally and hero's feast. But you may ask, why do we need two spells from level 6 while we get only one level 6 spell slot? Let me show you this. So, if you get this marker, Hashker from our friend Gale over here, from our wizard, sorcerer, whatever. So, you can go and cube this stuff first, and that's how you play your cleric. You just use arcane battery 
to cast spell without using spell slot, so we're using our spell slot uh, to create a genie, my favorite ally, I like genie a lot. And just like that, we got one more ally in our party. As you can see, he got pretty nice health pool, 161. But our other party members got pretty low HP, for tactician especially. So we don't need uh, this uh, Marka Heshkir owner of Marka Heshkir. And he can use this stuff again. So it's until long rest, but per party member. So you can use it on any party member you like to use spells without spell slot one time per long rest. So now when we get our genie, we want to use Hira's Fist. And just like that, we're using level six spell slot and every party member getting additional health points. But that's not it, because we got this awesome amulet, spell crocs amulet. We can restore one spell slot per long rest. So again, we're restoring level six spell slot and Depending on your playstyle, on your choice, you can go and cast 8 level 6 to increase your health pool by 25 health or cast 8 level 5, that's totally okay too, to increase by 20. And just like that our party got massive health pool and it's really hard to be dead. And our playstyle is really easy. So all we want to do is to cast Spirit Guardians with highest spell slot possible and we will use Spirit Guardians of level 6 because we can cast 3 spells of level 6 spell just like that and they will do incredible amounts of damage from 6 to 48 damage each turn to any target that we pass in nearby. So let's make ourselves with targets. With Genie you can cast Thunder Wave, really cool spell, you can push targets off the cliffs or make them close to each other so you can utilize your Spirit Guardian spell. And as you can see, targets passing by, getting damaged by your Spirit Guardians. And they trying to smash us, but they can't destroy our concentration with stun because we got this helmet, awesome helmet. And when it's time for our turn, they will get more damage if they're nearby. So as you can see, because we are fighter, we add in constitution modifier to saving throws and it's really a lot easier for us to succeed on saving throws. And basically all we want to do as uh, this type of cleric, just to run around and inflict damage with our spirit guardians to everyone nearby. And we can use every turn mass healing ward or just healing ward to add this protection from our second amulet to all our parties. You can see everyone got in blade ward. That's insane amounts of buffs and <laughs> it's really broken. Additionally, as light domain cleric, you got this awesome future radiance of dawn. It's inflicting 2d10 plus 12 radiant damage to everyone nearby, every enemy nearby. They can succeed on constitution saving throw, so it can do half damage. And additionally, as light domain cleric, you can do fire magic like wall of fire, fireball, scorching ray, burning hands. So you got uh, your actions, bonus section and channel divinity, and you will do all your actions in every turn. And with keeping and while keeping concentration on spirit guardians, of course, you're basically inflicting damage two times every turn with spirit guardians and with another spell, or just with your mace attack, just like that. And additionally, you got another cool future from. Light Demon Cleric, it's improved warding flare. You can use your reaction to save your allies. So basically when someone roll an attack, you will see they need 19 to hit, they rolled 20, it will be critical hit and you just uh, impose disadvantage on their attack. And with your reaction, maybe enemies will even miss. Just like that, instead of critical hitting your allies, they missing. And it can be used on yourself too. What do you think about these builds? I think they're broken OP and very fun to play. And by the way, I used all these four builds for my party members to beat this game on Tactician mod. I hope you enjoyed this video and go watch other videos on the screen right now. They're awesome too. And see you in the next videos, guys.